Welcome. I'm going to show you today how to create depth in a 2D drawing. Here you can see I've got a nice vector drawing that shows a cup and a plate of donut. But as with a lot of vector drawings, it seems quite flat. The tabletop seems to end abruptly here and there's no distance between this and what is to be kind of a wall. Even the shadow kind of bends up onto the wall. So we're going to take this 2D, 2D vector drawing and we're going to give it some depth. And this is what we're going to end up with. You can see in this one, there's more depth between the plate of donuts and the cup itself, and it gives the whole image more depth. And personally, the background in this one, I think, too, lends a bit more interest to the entire scene. So, are you ready? Let's begin. Okay, here we are. You can see here the images that we're going to use to create our new image. I've got the cup and the donuts from our original image and this seamlessly tiling lace. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull these off over here onto the pasteboard. In this image, I can delete it from the page as it will be available to us in the bitmap gallery and we'll be using it from there. All right, now the first thing I am going to do is to begin to create our background. We're going to set this up kind of like a stage. So this first piece will actually be our backdrop. As you can see, I've just created a nice little rectangle here, and this is going to be the basic size of our image. So now, if we don't straight black. Let's give it, let's see, I was using kind of a cyan color, I guess, in the original in the image. So we'll go with a medium cyan. And the first thing we're going to do to this is to use our fill tool, and we're just going to apply a linear fill, stretching up like this. And this bottom color, I'm going to make it a dark Cyan color. So we're going to go from dark to light. And then I'm going to bring the bottom up, kind of like this, and the top down. So that we have a bit of a sharper change between light and dark. Bring this up just a bit more. This will become quite useful when we get a little bit more into this. We're also going to set this up in a similar way to a landscape. So we're going to be thinking in the rule of thirds with this. Now the next thing I am going to do is to clone this rectangle using the keyboard shortcut Control K. Okay, now I've got two copies layer gallery here, you can see two identical rectangles. So now, with my top one still selected, I'm going to give it a transparency. But I'm going to change the mix here to stained glass, which kind of darkens and deepens it. And over here, I'm going to go down to fractal plasma. And you can see how it's given it a kind of mottled effect. And I think I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm just going to stretch this out just a bit. And maybe if we can zoom out here, just bring this down just a bit more. Maybe skew it a bit. Now I'm going to click in the center node here of the handle. And I'm going to adjust the transparency just to make this a bit softer. 
Now this is going to give us a nice kind of a soft looking background. Maybe we'll continue to adjust this just a little bit. Basically we just want it soft. We don't want it over the top. All right, now the next layer I'm going to add in here. I'm going to draw another rectangle and I'm going to make this one quite a bit larger, wider it means, than the first one. And I'm going to pull it down a bit. This is where the rule of thirds comes in. This is going to be the bottom of our drawing or the stage, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, the first thing I am going to do is remove the linear fill. And just make it flat. And again, I'm going to clone this. Control K. Now this clone, I'm going to make much lighter. I'm actually going to open the color editor and maybe give it more of a soft kind of grayish blue there. I'm going to make it look very soft. Now our lace tile comes in. I'm going to open the bitmap gallery and here's our lace tile down here. I'm going to select it, and you'll notice this rectangle here is still selected. And I'm simply going to click this button here, which applies it as a transparency, giving us this lovely lace look. Now I'm going to, <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to just reduce this down just a bit. I'm going to set Okay, now with the selector tool, I'm going to marquee select both rectangles that are making up this lace and group them. Control control G. Now that these are grouped, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get the mold tool. I'm going to apply a floor perspective to it. And as you can see, when we're going to turn this, it's already giving it a floor perspective. We'll give it a bit more depth. And I'm going to pull it down. And I'm going to play with it a bit. Maybe bring this up just a bit. No, no, no. I don't want to uncover the bottom of this background rectangle. We can bring this down a little bit. We want to make it look fairly flat. Okay, I will marquee select these layers and just bring them down. back here to this and just make sure this background needs to be even and level across. Maybe just bring that down a bit and bring it up from the bottom there. Just like that. Now already that's giving our drawing a bit more depth. But it still has a very sharp cutoff. This next step is going to be going to help fix that. With our mold selected, we're going to clone that with Control K. Now we're going to go back to the transparency 
and we are going to give it a stained glass transparency. And we're going to change this to linear transparency. And we'll just adjust that. Basically, what we want is to have the darkness coming in back here. But it should blend in with this background just a bit better. I'm just going to move this around and do that. Now we're still getting a bit of a line here, but hopefully we'll get that taken care of in just a second. The next thing I am going to do to open this is I'm going to apply a live effect. So I'm going to open up the live effects over here and click New. And under the list of live effects, I'm going to go way up here to the top. We're going to use the Enhance effect. This is one of what I like to call as far as way back features. This little enhanced stuff works really good. So I'm going to blur it. So bring the blurring up. And this will blur this layer. Giving it a nice soft And of course, as you come closer, as the transparency will be applied, you will see it will get clearer. Again, adding to the depth. I think I'm just going to use this. There. Much, much better. Now, we're ready to add our props. First, I'm going to bring in the plate of donuts. Bring it to the front. I'm going to put the plate of donuts right about here. And I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. And now I'll bring in the cup. Again, I'm going to use Control F to bring that to the front. Now, we want the cup to appear to be behind the plate of donuts, so we need to make it quite a bit smaller. Okay, maybe that's too small. There we go. Now I'm going to bring this down just a bit. Bring the cup down. Now, you can see the plate of donuts already has a nice shadow on it. I just did that with basically a, a, an ellipse with some feathering and some softness to it. The cup doesn't have its shadow on it, but I'm going to zoom in and we'll do that right now. How I'm going to add the shadow to the cup is one of my favorite ways to add a custom shadow. I'm simply going to right click and drag to create a copy of the cup. I'm going to click down here in the color line and make it black. And I'll right click and set the line color. Now it's all black, which is perfect, which is what we want. I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut, shortcut, Control Shift V, and I'm going to send it behind the cup. Now pull it down, and skew it over. Line it up so that it shows. Barely under the cup, like so. Pull this down, skew this. Yeah, just pull this down just a bit. Just so that it's just barely showing. Alright, now we've got the shadow in place, but it's still rather sharp and rather dark. 
So I'm just going to add some linear transparency to this. And bring it up. And I'm going to go to my live effects and the enhance feature again. I'm going to give this shadow a blur. Just the blur. You can still see maybe a bit of that hand, but the shadow is much softer. Now, one more thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull this shadow out just a bit, stretch it out a bit more. I just want the shadow to sort of blend in with the edge here. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to duplicate it. Now there's one more little trick I'm going to do. I want to add just a hair more depth to this. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to select this mottled layer and I'm going to clone it with again Control K. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send it back so that it is behind the donut, but I want it above the cup. So I'm going to go back to my page and layer gallery. Here, because the easiest way to do this is to bring this rectangle back so it's behind the donut. We want it in front of the cup. So I'm going to select the cup and pull it back so it's just over, just behind the rectangle. And we'll put the shadow behind the cup. And there we go. Everything's in the layer that we wanted it. Now, I'm just going to select this rectangle and select the transparency tool. Zoom out for a minute. And I'm just going to, on this one, maybe slightly adjust the transparency effect. Back off for a minute. Just a hair. I'm going to just again. I don't want to overdo this, but I just want to add just this extra layer of this model of transparency just to further give the illusion an idea that there's space between the donuts and the cup. Now I'm going to zoom in. Not too much. And I'm going to use Control A to select everything. And I'm simply going to hit Q on the keyboard to apply a flip view. And there's our image. I kind of like that. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to visit the thread for this video at TotGraphics.com. I will also post in the clip art gallery on TotGraphics the source images that I've used for this video.